Good morning, Ace Academy. Welcome to another exciting morning of eighth grade science live from the Brenna Bunker. We're actually recorded as far as you guys are concerned. Good morning, afternoon, good evening, whatever time you may be. Another day of quarantine here in the beautiful Southeast United States. We will uh, continue on with our exploration of AD1. Today we're talking about the properties of water. So, as you can see on the screen, it says 811 properties of water. So I can identify the properties of water to allow it to play a role in all of the spheres of Earth: the hydrosphere, the lithosphere, the atmosphere, and the biosphere. That's a lot of spheres, isn't it? But anyway, so I'm glad you guys could again join me. Remember, in the YouTube videos, you can subscribe to my channel, hit like right down there underneath the screen, and remember to leave a comment because again, we are using comments as our attendance today these days. So you don't comment in the comment section, you will be not be marked as attending class for today for science. So let's get on with our lesson for today. So we're talking about water and the properties that allow it to do things because water is, is truly one of the most amazing substances. Truly allows life on Earth. Without water, if it wasn't the molecule that it was, life wouldn't exist as we know it today on Earth. That water has life as we know it would not exist on Earth. <coughs> that's, that's the simple fact. There's no way to get around that particular piece of it. Water is absolutely as simple as, as what we consider it. You know, you turn on the spigot, it comes out, we use it to cook with, we drink it, whatever. That it's you know 70 97 70 percent of the surface here is covered by water hmm, hey it's funny that about 70 percent of our body's weight is water so if it wasn't for the amazing properties that water has life as we would know it would not exist on earth so now to start water is only compound is known to be found in all three states naturally so only compound and then be all three states natural and by states we're talking about what solids liquids and gases ice Water, which is what we call liquid state, and water vapor. Exist regularly in our weather and daily lives. And, and normal, or regular, I mean, you know, we go through seasons, we go through um, times where, you know, things are doing things, you know, weather-wise, and we, we, we see frozen things, whether it's snow or ice on the ground. Um, we see, you know, liquid water, you know, constantly. Uh, but if we don't have liquid water available to us, um, we pretty much fall over and die within about four days. And water vapor, which is what, you know, propels our weather systems around the planet. So. I mean, all three of these, uh, all three states exist on a regular basis in our natural, in our natural lives. So, you know, without that, uh, you know, life as, as we know it wouldn't exist on this planet. I mean, and truly, truly, that, that is a statement that um, absolutely is not hyperbole. It is you know, without water and, and the fact of, you know, the, of the chemical processes we're about to go through, or not process, chemical characteristics that we're about to go through. Um, 
you, you know, we wouldn't we wouldn't have the capability of, of functioning the way we do. So chemically, water is unusual. To start, it is polar. Let's see, it is a polar molecule. Yeah, I guess polar, it's like, you've heard polar before, polar express, the train the grid thick goes up the, you know, the pole. We have uh, polarity um, in a battery. So you have a positive end on one and a negative end on all the battery. So that's exactly you know, the kind of thing, um, the battery that the, when we're talking about water, that's exactly what we're thinking about. Because water, uh, so when we think about water being polar, um, the water molecule looks kind of like this. So I'm gonna annotate this and so, it's, it's kind of around, just remember that these things, when we start moving the, the screen, it, they will not follow with us. You know, water molecule looks like this. We got, you know, hydrogens kind of look over here. The oxygen molecule is right here. So it looks, it looks kind of like that. And so on one end of this thing, there's a slightly negative charge here with the oxygen molecule. And down here on each of these hydrogens, there's a slightly positive charge. Annotation. Well, it means it has a slight negative charge on the oxygen atom. A slightly positive charge. hydrogen atoms. So you literally have one side of this thing, it's got a positive charge, you got one side of this thing, it's got a negative charge. Um, this polarity, the fact that it is charged this way, has a huge thing to do with, you know, how it bonds to itself and to other things. So obviously, um, you know, positive and minuses, you know, pluses and minuses do like to stick to each other. Um, opposites attract, especially in chemistry. So, so here's where we go with this. So, now polarity is not that unusual in, a mo in molecules. But in water's case, Well, that's the positive oxygen side. Excuse me. <laughs> positive hydrogen side. To bond with the negative oxygen side. These molecules together. And so this bonding between these things um, is called a hydrogen bond. So 
You guys are gonna need to know what this hydrogen bond is, okay? You need to know what polar means. Um, so make sure you know what polar means. Make sure you know what a hydrogen bond is. So now hydrogen bonds are not only found in water. So hydrogen bonds are also found in, in many other molecules. Um, so it's not like it's, it's only in water. But hydrogen bonding allows the water to do some things that it are, are really unusual as far as um, things you know things go. As far as uh, they make the models, they make the molecules stick together. So now here's the next thing you got to know. So hydrogen bonds. stick together sometimes unusual ways we call this um, capability cohesion now, cohesion is another word and we're definitely going to need to know what it is Cohesion is the tendency for water molecules to stick together. Simple enough, right? Cohesion, tendency for water molecules to stick together. Pretty straightforward, right? Cohesion, but then goes on to add into this thing. So cohesion is the fact that they like to stick together. And then cohesion gives us cohesion gives water its high surface tension surface tensions here we go again here's another word you definitely need to know surface tension all right so scientifically surface tension it's a property water no, well, surface tension in general is the property of a liquid allows the surface layer to resist an external force. Surface tension in water is the property that is displayed by it acting as if it were a stretched elastic membrane, S T R E A C H E D, stretched. No, I can never spell stretch. Elastic membrane. Now, um, so when we talk about elastic membrane, just imagine if you popped a balloon, took a piece of rubber, and just kind of pulled it out, made it flat. It's an elastic membrane, stretched. So surface tension in the water is the property that displays by acting as if it were a stretched elastic membrane. So 
So this is what allows, you know, when you go down to the pond in, in the summer and, you know, often the shady parts of it, you see these little bugs that are floating around on top of the water. And you know that bug weighs, is more dense and it should sink, but it, yet it still wanders around the surface of the water. Um, in the early days of, of compasses, they would magnetize a, uh, a needle and float a needle on the surface tension of a cup of water. The needle would spin around on the, on the, in the surface tension and then point north through the magnetic fields of the planet. Um, surface tension is what allows a droplet to form. So as you, if you watch you know, in slow motion a droplet you know, form up into a ball and then fall off, surface tension is what makes it fill out that droplet before it becomes so heavy that it breaks the tension and it falls that's surface tension without surface tension you know between the uh, you know, that wouldn't be happening so, so now um now but why does water have the surface tension? so if that's a good question So if we look at the molecules of water, you know, they're all floating around together. So, you know, here's our molecule over here again. So if we got our friend the molecule here and he's just wandering, you know, he's just sitting there hanging out. Um, on any given point, any given time, in, in a cup of water where you've got these guys, um, jump over here to this page. So look at this. So. At any given point, our little friend, the molecule here, you know, he's got a bunch of friends around him that he's all bonded up with. And, but on the surface, our same molecule here doesn't have anybody above him. So all these arrows that were above him now don't exist. So the cohesive forces, the, you know, the, the cohension, uh, cohension between the molecules in a liquid or share with all the neighboring atoms. So those on the surface have no neighboring atoms above and exhibit stronger attractive forces upon their nearest neighbors on the surface. So once there's nothing above it, it kind of transfers the power that it was using to hold on all those above it into the contact between the two. So it's just like, um, so we don't need shields up here, so we're transferring the power from those shields to the, you know, the, the, the molecules that are next to us and holding on to them. So that's what surface tension is. Surface tension is when the water molecules You don't have molecules above them to hang on to. And use that other attract, extra attractive force that they're not using to hang on to the ones that are above them. Use that attractive force on their neighbors. Besides them. So this extra attractive force on these molecules that are that are next to them provides the the additional attention between those molecules that produce surface tension. Any questions about that? Please, either text me, call me, email me, drop me a note, and then uh, in the thing. But again, surface tension is is is, is an incredibly um, important. Um, aspect of water, and again, it's as I highlighted here. I've already highlighted there. So anyway, surface tension. You, you need to know what that word. Means. So polar, hydrogen bond, cohesion, surface tension. Those are four things we absolutely have to know what those terms are um, as we go forward. Here. Uh, let's see. We are. Fifteen minutes into this. Checking my clock here. Let's 
16. Yeah, so we're, we're 20 minutes into this. So we're going to call this this today's lesson right here. Um, first day of properties of water. So we're going we're gonna to stop there with those four terms. So polar, hydrogen bond, cohesion, surface tension. Those are the four things we definitely needed to have, um, uh, remember for today. And you guys will have um, just some do not questions for today. Um, I'm not going to give you any more work um, beyond just the do not questions for today. And then we'll go on from there. So remember to like the video. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Remember to put your name and say, hey, thanks. You know, saw it down in the comment section. And we will uh, we'll catch up with you guys again tomorrow. So have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow at the Rhino Marker.